to be back in Japan. We are so excited to have you here. Uh, I don't think anything really represents how vast the sport has grown more than the presence of Argentina and Japan in this tournament. Argentina and Japan have traveled so far and I mean you look at their rosters they don't have as many skaters available to them as the other teams that have traveled to take part in this but their commitment to taking part in this sort of you know groundbreaking <laughs> event is phenomenal. And I tell you what, we're going to run through the rosters real quick, but it's awfully hard not to be totally enamored with the Japan team because they're having so much fun. The crowd loves this Japan team. It's fantastic. Even yeah. the Scottish fans that are down cheering on Power of Scotland have got a lot of oh, love for yeah. Nin Japan. And I tell you what, I'll, I'll hit the Japanese roster here quickly as they're doing equipment checks. Uh, we're going to have number one, U2. Uh, number four, Chuck Breaker. Number seven, uh, Yuma-san. Number 11, Katsu. Number 18, uh, Gundam. Number 32, uh, Ikegesoro. Number 99, Bubble. Number 110, Show. Number 113, Ganzi. Number 136, Zoro. Number 1929, DJ Jack. And number R4, Mayuge Bondai. And for the Scottish team, we'll give a quick run through their roster as well. Number 101, he's known as the King in the North, is Matheson. We've got 1664, one of my favourite combinations of names and numbers is Konenberg. Number 18, Tequila Jammer, the j -j -j Judder Jam, as he's known at number 19. 2212 is White and McDie. 2D is Nuke Jukum. 42, Dead Hardy. Number 5 is Dreddy Mercury. 57, the man who loves cake, is Jaffa Skates. Number eight is Porky. Eight zero two is the Red Baron, one of the most gentlemanly people in the world of roller derby. Number nine with a truly Scottish name, WK Deeds. Number nine seven six, the Real Scrim Shady, and SR seventy one zero. And you can hear the crowd start to get pumped up. I want to remind you that we are on the Quad Skate Shop track. Quad Skate Shop, Europe's original brick and mortar roller derby equipment supplier. Quad Roller Skate Shop has the best selection and the most stock of any store on the continent. With excellent consultation services and only that only a fellow skater could provide, we've, we've got all your needs covered. Dream for this game. A lot of people out there showing love for Power of Scotland and Nin Japan. Yes, as well they should. This is, uh, of course, we want to explain that these are only 30 minute bouts. Uh, Friday is all about pool play. Yep. We've got four different pools, right, Smack Daddy? And what will happen is based, they will all play each other once in a 30 minute bout. Uh, the records will then be determined and the the top teams will then be seeded into the overall competition but every every league is guaranteed three games between today and tomorrow guaranteed a minimum of three games which makes the yes. travel itself all Chiban Gundam San Nip like we're going to play i think they're about ready to get this first jam underway <laughs> I'll tell you, there's not a person, I don't think, that is not at this track. This track is packed, and they are making a lot, a lot, a lot of noise. Some of the Power of Scotland fans have brought a humongous drum with them. <laughs> 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 we've got drums, we've got horns. I think they've even brought some Vuvuzelas. I haven't seen those since Football World Cup a few years ago. <laughs> wow. <laughs> A lot of love being shown between the skaters there as well. Handshakes all round from both oh, teams. Oh, yeah. Uh, like I said, the, <laughs> the Japanese team is... Spring shady, Sam. White and white. Everything they do is so positive. They all have smiles on their face. Yes. They're all keen to get going. There's not a negative vibe no, about the team. It's brilliant. No. That's the kind of spirit the Derby shows. Yeah, absolutely. And 
and we've got our first whistle. We got things going here. And right now we're taking a look at number R4, which is my born die. But 2D, Luke Jukum's now got through and taken lead jam status for Power of Scotland in this first jam. But we've got we've got uh, Mayogi, he is behind. And on the first pass, textbook call. He's gonna get stuck behind a three wall, call that thing off. Japan so far showing that uh, this is they've got some skills they are some fantastic skaters their actual skating ability is phenomenal yeah I believe I, I would have, I would believe that these guys I mean for those who aren't aware Japan doesn't have any men's roller derby teams in Japan other than the national team so these guys train together yep. all the time yep. they've been training every day in the builds up to this World Cup they know each other so well they're just a well-drilled unit and of course WFTDA having uh, um, having their first apprentice league uh, in Japan earlier this year as we're going to see the uh, second time get off and look at that oh my god it looked like somebody stamped out a packet of ketchup he shot through there so tequila bad. jammer is so quick off the mark oh nice move to the outside they're gonna pin him just skips round yeah. hold his feet nicely kept himself on track and you're exactly right footwork 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 at that point Oh, smart jamming there, just spots the gap down the inside line, nails himself straight through it. And I tell you, Smack Daddy, the thing is, he's got that extra gear. When he needs it, it's like bang, he's got that extra step through the daylight. He just sparks from nowhere. He's a quick skater anyway, but he just seems to find that little bit extra when he needs it. And right now, the Japanese finding it very difficult to go ahead and set themselves up. Strong blocking from Judder Jam there, though, just on the outside, works the space through and allows his jam around the outside line. And Tequila Jammer, after his last scoring pass there, just calls the jam off smartly. And just having a difficult time trying to see with the see what we've got in the penalty box. I think we I may have missed the call, but it looks like we're gonna start off with a power jam yeah. on this one for Power of Scotland. Ninja Japan's jammer is into the sin bin just now. We'll try and get an update on what that penalty was for. Yeah, and right and right now we're looking at a 4-2 difference in, in blocking. Real That's scrim shady now through jamming for Power of Scotland and takes lead. Again, just quick feet. He steps side to side, shuffles his way through. Yeah, and, and you could tell that right there, they're, they're not used to the ability of somebody at a tightrope, that inside line with that kind of speed. Show just missing by a fraction of a second. Only just misses. And we see the, the bulk of the Japanese team back out on the track. And in fact, they may be back at full force. Japanese jammers back in play. He completed his initial pass, but just as he comes to the back of the pack, real scrim shady calls the jam off. Good communication again from the Power of Scotland boys. They just let their jammer know where the Ninja Pan jammer's coming from. Keeps them well in communication. And let's face it, Smack Daddy, the team that is the quietest on the track is the one that's losing. Unfortunately, that's true. Communication is just as big a deal as your actual skating ability. You have to be able to talk to each other on track. If you can't, you can't tell each other what's going no, on. No, exactly. There's no chemistry. We're going to see this jam take off one more time here. And who we have pounding up through the front. Looks like Dead Hardy jamming for Power of Scotland. Yep. Big block forces him off on the outside of the track, though he's recycled all the way back into the back. While my Yugi Born Dai is going to be your lead jammer. He has, has a little slip going through turn four, and right now waiting for something to set up. He's going to, he's going to get knocked down. He's fortunate enough that he ends up on his knees, so he's going to go back and he's going to be able to recycle himself as we've got a jammer penalty for Scotland. Cut track called on Dead Hardy just oh, as. Oh, and he missed, he, he missed the landing zone. They're gonna send him around one more time. Just landed in, skipped outside, but unfortunately back on track as he stood up. 
the, the old point of no return. And I tell you, as I sit back up, we want to say thank you to Green Monster. Green Monster Roller Sports, all new. Visit us today. That's at greenmonster.com. You want to spell that G-R-N-M-N-S-T-R.com. Big, strong block from Porky there on one of the Ninja Pan blockers. Doesn't have as good an effect as he hoped for, though. Ninja Pan through and take lead jammer again. Yeah, we saw bodies fly. All he did was end up without a pack. And again, just missing that block at the end there, allows him through again for another pass. And you too. Uh, you too gets her one more time. That's going to be another five, another grand slam smack, Daddy. One of the great things to watch with you 2 is just how close he takes to the outside line. So U2 just gets really low. He skips himself round and takes down the outside line. Huge cheers from everyone in the audience for U2 as he completes each pass. And I'll tell you, you two probably getting lower than what we've seen earlier today. We've seen a lot of, of course, we have we have seen a number of bouts that were pretty far side. Oh, nice tiptoe right there. Unfortunately, he just couldn't oh. hold himself in, though. Just came off track, stepped back in. Nick Walenda would be so disappointed. But you're right, you two getting down very low, obviously a very, very important part of maintaining your ability to leverage blocks. We haven't seen a lot of that earlier today. A lot of stand-up skating, but it's going to change, I think, when... I think a lot of people are just getting into their stride. Yeah. This tournament's just kicking off. Dead Hardy now back in play, jamming again for Power of Scotland. And Dead Hardy, really one of those guys that you could tell just from his build how important, how important a role he plays. He's short, he's got a low center of gravity, he's strong. Yeah, unfortunately there, though, just as he approached the back of the Ninja Pan blocker, he went down, took his leg out from behind him, called a low block, meaning Dead Hardy makes his way to the sin bin once more. And of course, as you and I know, that's going to get called every time. That's just a safety issue. Every time. Safety is key for all skaters on track at all times. The referees have to make these calls you for know, the benefit of everyone. You know, Smack Daddy, I don't care what anybody says, I think you're all right. I try. Yeah, I, I try. Yeah. Not everyone. I'm not everyone's cup of tea, but I try. No, no, no you're mine, man. <laughs> Coffee. <Yeah. laughs> and uh, we're gonna get going here once again. Another jam. You're listening to Bob Knox and some Smack Daddy. Looks like U2 back on jamming again for Ninja Pan. Takes a big block from the Red Bar and forces him off on the outside. He's recycled all the way back to the end. And I give him credit because I tell you, the Scotland team is not small in stature. They are a group of larger Scottish gentlemen, I think is probably the nice way to call them. But they, but a good kind of large. <laughs> they are. They're not, they're not a bad they're large. Strong. They're strong. Strong Paul blocking. Strong men, yeah. Strong blocking from Red Baron just at the end there, but out of play was called, so unfortunately he'll now take a seat in the sin bin as well for Power of Scotland. And there we see New Duke. Um, Working on, a, on another pass. Nice four wall formed by Japan. Did they, he calls it off. Smart again. And we've got another final for you. It was a nice game as the Netherlands prevails over Sweden, 101 to 72. That was on the roller derby city track just moments ago. Good win for the Netherlands there against Sweden. A nice close game as well. Yeah, I, I, I agreed. And I think we all felt that that was probably going to be a pretty good matchup. Clearly was. And we've got another jam started right here. Once again, it's going to be Mayogi born die. And I tell you how he stayed on his feet to get as far as he did, I don't know. I'm not sure how he managed it, but he managed to get through first and take lead jammer. So he has been, he has, he has passed the hips, he's received lead jam, even though he's been sucked back into the pack. Now he is free. 
Tequila Jammer though had completed his initial pass and made it through last two Ninjapan blockers just as they tried to call the jam off. Another two points on the board for Power of Scotland. Yeah, and there's just kind of a little bit of a learning, uh, part of the learning curve. That was a scenario where either he didn't quite, didn't quite know that he was lead jammer Again, or he is, just forgot to call it off. It relates back to what we said earlier, communication yeah. between the teams as well. That is a tough. That is a tough scenario, though. When you come out and you are just the jammer, you get sucked back in the pack. You're lucky if you have time to notice. We're off again, and look at that. Real scrim, Shady just spots a gap in the middle of the Ninja Pan wall, and that was easier than wild trap through an ice floe, my friend. It was like a hot lightsaber through a. Was it a tauntaun? I don't know. Could be. <laughs> Oh, nice move by Scrim Shady. With oh. a spin, he stays in. Another one, and he stays in. How many, Get out of here. How many spins can one man put into one pass on a pack and still keep himself on track? Nothing too fancy that time oh. with that pass, though. Just down the inside line. That was absolutely breathtaking. The fact that he was tiptoeing that outside rope the entire time. The real Scrim Shady has been working so hard on his agility skills, training with the Power of Scotland team, and it's clearly paying off for him. You know, everything he did just there moments ago, I've done, but never on purpose. Yes, <laughs> I've, I've always done it, but never when anyone else was watching. <laughs> I do, only I can prove it. <laughs> I'll take your word for that. <laughs> We've got a score of 82. I'm sorry, they're going to update it right now. It looks like it's going to be 87 29. That's going to be in favor of uh, Team Scotland. And they will be starting this jam with a power jam as well. Ninja Pan Jammer in the Sinbin, but looks at things. We missed that call. I'm not sure what he was called for. They've got to be more obvious. We keep missing. I know. <laughs> Again, just sensible setup from Power of Scotland, holding off the two Ninja Pan blockers on track and creating a space down the outside line for their jammer. Well, and there's no question that the biggest, the biggest difference between these two teams is penalties. Uh, you know, th this again, we're watching, we're watching a, a severely depleted Japan team. Uh, we're, we're watching most of their teammates sit down right now. But we've seen when Ninja Pan have a full content on they track, are, yeah. they are a threat. Yes, that's you're exactly right. That was, oh, that was nice. A, lo a little misdirection play. He's going to lead him to the outside, cut inside. Quick juke on his feet, takes it back down the inside yeah. line. Yeah, and, and you have to be because that's one of those plays that everybody knows is coming. But it's one, not many can pull it off anymore. You can see it, but you don't know. It, it's so hard to defend against as well because you don't know. Is he going to fake? Is he throwing a fake to the fake? We don't know where he's going to yeah. go. Yeah. And I, I do actually believe that that is one of the biggest differences between men's and women's derby. Uh, it, it, it has a lot to do with the body language and the body faking. It's something that... Uh, it, as we play basketball, if you play football, if you play, you know, yeah. any kind of sport from all over the world, uh, misdirection plays are a huge part of what happens. And you Tequila see that Jammer now often. through and takes Lee Jammer status, an out of play penalty called on Ninja Pan Blocker through, will make his way towards the Sinbin now. And. I think they oh, call it. I think they, yeah, they call it. Tequila uh, Jammer thought he had a no pass, no penalty situation there, but unfortunately not. Cut track. Cut yep. track. He takes a seat in the Sinbin now for Power of Scotland, meaning it's a quick power jam reversal for Ninja Pan. And oh, Zoro out there right unfortunately, now. Unfortunately, Zoro's through, but he's lost his helmet cover. And it looks like they're going to be outside the zone of engagement. We're going to see number 101 Matheson sent to the sin bin. But once again, we've got Zoro out there without his helmet cover. Uh, Unfortunately, he, I don't think he's noticed. I don't think anyone's pointed out to him that his helmet cover is gone. Yeah, now we see the team. We see the rest of his blockers telling him. And there he's got it. Now he has it back. But that was a lot of mileage earned that's not going to score any points. Turns out the number 32 for Ninja Pan was actually sent back to his bench, not the sin bin. We're not sure why he was sent back to his bench, but it wasn't the penalty called. 
And we are halfway through. That's number 2212, White and McDye now for Power of Scotland on his way, blocking out of play after no pack was called. And you always got to give a little extra kudos to the guys that wear makeup. It's just so much more. Tequila Jammer now back on track, straight through the outside line. Tequila Jammer, incredibly, incredibly impressive. He has been very impressive in this first bout for Power of Scotland. And Team Chaban right now, though, going to field three blockers. Actually, I believe they should have a full squad. A little bit of a sight disadvantage when things get started here, but no disadvantage right there. Who we got out in front, my friend? Real scrim shady there. No disadvantage for him. Just spots a gap again, goes through and takes lead jammer for Power of Scotland. Oh! Just a last block missed. It looks like Show stumbled just as he came to the end. Uh, truth of the matter is Show was lucky that didn't connect. Japan's pivot was standing in the penalty box there. He is now back in play for Japan, giving them three blockers black on track. Real scrim shady, smart jam in there, just protects the points at the back. Don't risk it. Call the jam off and save yourself. But Ninja Pan doing a nice job of continuing to put points up on the board. Uh, we see that the differential right now is 119 to 38. And once again, as my cohort here, Smack Daddy and I have alluded to a number of times, it has been a penalty mismatch more than anything else. Yep, when Ninja Pan keep their skaters on track, they are dangerous. And right there, we're going to see R4. That, of course, is going to be my Mayogi Bondi. But he is going to get called off the track. Looks like an illegal procedure called there, unfortunately, on the Ninja Pan Jammer, meaning it's now a power jam to power of Scotland. 2D Nuke Jukim taking full advantage through for another five points. Yeah, and, and one thing to uh, actually, one thing to bring up is there uh, there is no challenges or timeouts during these 30 minute bouts. So when we see things like that illegal procedure, we don't always know what they're going to be for. We can't always get clarification on them, but it's one of the joys of uh, Derby is at least the referees have hand signals so we can at least identify what the penalty is. It looked like the start was okay. I'm wondering if uh, it wasn't just something simple like maybe a mouth guard not being in place. Quite possibly. As we said earlier, safety is key. You can't take any of your safety equipment off while you're on track. That includes removing your mouth guard. And Nuke Jukum going to call it off right there as he passes the last two. Uh, I think there was a direction of gameplay penalty called on one of the Ninja Pan blockers again just at the end as Nuke Jukum made his way through. Yeah. That Based, based on the angle of the way some of them were turned, that's very possible. It's always the risk when you turn round to face the jammer as he's coming towards you. You have to keep yourself moving in that derby direction, otherwise you will get called on direction of gameplay. Looks like Tequila Jammer now back in again for Power of Scotland. Charges his way through the two Ninja Pan blockers on track, takes lead. And as Ninja Pan, of course, once again, suffering from penalty trouble, their jammer back into the game. I tell you, he is tenacious. He just does not give up. He will hit the back of that wall, but he won't stop. And let's take you back to uh, some of our sponsors. We want to say thank you to our Privilite sponsor, which is GBEMS. And this next jam will be brought to you by GBEMS, the only UK RDA endorsed medical team. We'd also like to say thank you to say thank you to all of you for any broadcast donations. If you're enjoying listening to us, drop us a few quid dollars or. Zlody, do you have any idea what a Zlody is? I have no idea. Okay, well, that's, I will, good. that's not just me. 
Use the link on the broadcast page. Split. The uh, proceeds are split 50 50 between the broadcast and the team travel fund. Which means by helping us, you're also helping out all of the skaters who've traveled to take part in this inaugural World Cup. And real skate. get a back block for that? Yeah. He is. He just charged his way through. It was, you know what? I, it looked like he had the right direction picked out, and he changed it at the last moment. I think he just made contact yeah. with the wrong part of the Ninja Pan blocker. It's a very fine line. When you're approaching the back of a blocker, you have to make sure you catch that right line, otherwise you will get called for a back block. He saw something on the inside he didn't like, which took him outside. I Quick reversal though, both jammers in and out of the penalty box in quick succession. Real scrim shady back through for another five points now though for Power of Scotland. Oh, and right now, right now some of the Ninja Rollers getting a feel for what it's like up against some of these large guys from Scotland. Looks like, I'm not entirely sure, but I think U2 for Ninja Pan has actually lost his helmet cover as he's gone through. Matheson there just working hard at the back for Power of Scotland to try and clear the space out. Yeah. Skated the wrong direction, though, crashed into U2. He'll now go to the Sinbin for direction of gameplay. Yep, absolutely. That Good. was a little bit naughty. Good pickup on that, my friend. And yeah, the, we, that's the second time that we've seen Japan helmet covers come off. I have a feeling Velcro will be in place tomorrow. Yeah, Velcro, Sellotape, Blue Tack, <laughs> anything they can get their hands on. Staple gun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they start stapling it to their helmets, I think we'll know who's jamming each time. And again, nothing taken away from the performance by this Japanese team. They are given a fantastic showing for, you know, a country that has such a small roller derby community, especially in the men's side of things, to come over to a World Cup like this and put in a kind of performance that they're doing now is a massive credit to them. And of course, you and I both know that the great thing about tournaments like this is the next game could be totally different for them. They'll go back and think about what happened, think about their penalties, know what's going to be called. Yep. And One thing that was called there is Zoro is the lead jammer for them. Japan. Beautiful footwork. Absolutely beautiful. Held himself, got low, kept his balance, and stayed on track. And Luke Jukum, nice move through the pack. Clockwise block, though, called on at number seven. Umisan at the back there for Nin Japan. He'll make his way towards the Sinbin now. Porky just standing his ground, oh. flashing through. I don't know. After a couple of hits, we're not exactly sure what he got called on, but it looked like he got tripped. Or he got he fell over somebody in a low block before. I want to remind you that 1 p.m. I think we've we got Great Britain against Germany, Australia. I think it is. Oh, Germany Germany, Germany like, versus Australia on the Roller Derby City track. That should be a good game to watch. The Australians had a, a pre-World Cup game against Power of Scotland earlier this week. They're in a massive showing for themselves. The crowd are going absolutely crazy for Zorro here. <laughs> <laughs> Nuke Dukem just showing how one foot glides can be everything in roller derby. Can, I don't know about you, but this crowd are going absolutely insane. I don't know if they, those listening on the feed can actually hear us. Zoro again! Oh, look at that! And a huge round of applause for Zoro. And Zoro may be our 60 year old player. He is absolutely loving it, and he is so grateful to the fans for the respect and admiration they're showing for the Ninja Pan Rollers. Yeah, really, every focus, every everybody is focused on this track at the moment. This crowd is kind of doing our job for us. The noise <laughs> and the right. buzz they're creating here is insane. Of course, I want to remind you that 
You go ahead and uh, look us up on Instagram under the MRDWC. Share your photos of yourself enjoying this this day of broadcast, and you may end up on the stream. Judd or Jam now just bouncing off the Ninja Plan blockers. Holds his balance so well as he comes off. Big spin and a crash through the back. A back block there from number 802, the Red Baron for Power of Scotland. He'll make his way to the sin bin now. And but we're gonna, yeah, but we're gonna see the uh, we're gonna see a Ninja Roller jammer sent off to the penalty box. Looks like a cut track was called on him there, meaning it's a power jam for Judder Jam and Power of Scotland. I tell you, Team Scotland doing a nice job of just absolutely moving bodies out of the way in these power jams. Porky the Penetrator, he gets that name for a reason. He just punches holes that no one else can see. Yeah, he has been incredibly impressive. Such a strong blocker. He doesn't skid. It's not even like he gets low and hits. He no. just holds his ground. Yeah, you're exactly right. Keeps himself low, keeps his derby stance low, and people just bounce off of him. And before this next jam gets started, we wanted to say thank you to Fast Girl Skates. Fast Girl Skates serving skaters of all shapes and sizes since 2007. www.fastgirlskates.com. Starting this one off with a power jam for Power of Scotland, and a tequila jammer took full advantage, skipped through and took lead jammer. Ninja Pan blockers, you two working so hard at the front to hold Tequila Jammer up. Fantastic blocking in the front there from you two. And, and what they lack in derby skill at this point, they make up for just being scrappy. Jaffa skates there, pivot for Power of Scotland, just looped through, created a hole for his jammer. And as they call that one off, we want to, of course, an announcement here from uh, the MRDA, the Men's Roller Derby Association, would like to wish all teams competing in the Men's Roller Derby World Cup the best of luck this weekend. The MRDA is the international governing body for men's flat track roller derby and wants you to join them in the growing world of men's roller derby. For more information about joining and the benefits of being part of the MRDA, visit them at the Men's Roller Derby Association com or send inquiries to info at the same addy. Looks like we've got White and McDye this time starting off jamming. It's his first jam, I think, for Power of Scotland in this one. I think it did right. start with a power jam, but Ninja Pan's jammer was standing as the jam whistle blew. Oh, nice footwork right there. Just transitions, breaks, stops, turns, and he's gone so quick. And that's a move you don't, that's a combination of moves you don't see very often, Smack Day. When you're going to come into a pack, turn around, stop on your toe stops, and flip around and shoot through. There are two things worth watching when it comes to White and McDye that move and the apex jump. Okay. You've, you've got me sold. <laughs> Looks like we've got just oh, about a minute 20 left to go now in this bout. Scores currently stand Japan 73, Scotland 222. Japan showing just what they can do when they have a full compilation of skaters on track. Well, yeah, they obviously did a nice job of making sure that outside lane was going to be open off the scrum start. Oh, oh. Tequila Jammer so quick caught up with you 2 and just knocked him off the outside. One thing so many fans love to see is Jammer on Jammer action in bouts like this. And unfortunately, cut track called on the U2. He now takes a seat in the sin bin. Yeah, I think too much of his body was out of bounds by the time he uh, by the time he hit his knees. Looks like Tequila Jammer now just going to run this one through in a power jam for Power of Scotland. And of course, the winner of the winner of the tournament will be shown. 
will be handed the Spirited Derby Cup. And on top of the Spirited Derby Cup is Apex Rex. The Spirit of Derby Cup as well, a solid, solid yeah, trophy. This is, this made is of the pewter. real deal. This is made of pewter, so I've been yep. told. This could be interesting. Oh, Jam called off. And I believe it is ginormous. I do believe so. And it looks like we've now just had the final whistle blown from this bout. A fantastic showing from Nin Japan. Yeah, absolutely. And I tell you, as we take a look at this Smack Daddy again, I think it, obviously a difference in the amount of time that these two teams, or that these individual players at least, have had to, to adapt to roller derby. Um, but penalties, penalties, penalties a big deal. They made all the difference. Final scores for that one then. Japan, 73. Power of Scotland, 247. A strong show in from Power of Scotland, but what a performance from Ninja Pan. Yeah, absolutely. Very tenacious, very scrappy, and they're playing with about eight players. Credit to the eight or nine that they've got here. They put in a massive performance and a huge amount of respect for them. Well, I tell you, Smack Daddy's been an absolute pleasure. It's pleasure's been all mine. So for Smack Daddy, I am Bob Noxious, and we're going to send you off to view some nice advertising from our sponsor.